Man, everything, we are matching like motherfuckers today. Are we? Oh, we're cool guys. <laughs> All fucking, you know, M81, M81 slings, M81 helmets. <laughs> Just to let you guys know what the true cool guy pattern is. Alright guys, welcome to another video. Today we have tips and tricks for the Airsoft Arena or any CQB environment specifically. Now these tips and tricks that we are going to go over are specifically for CQB tactics and may possibly not transform over into open environments such as wooded, but in some cases may apply. So stay tuned, we'll get into it. So the most important is going to be eye protection. So I myself wear one of the Pyramex Eye Forces. Carl? I, I wear the same thing, Pyramex Eye Forces. I just modified the band with a bungee tube versus the full band that they sell it with. I prefer going the band. Um, I think you and I both have the same idea of wearing the goggles over our faces first and then throwing all of our helmets and face protection on. Uh, I have multiple helmets. Uh, I've been really enjoying the PTS Flux. Uh, really nice helmet, very comfortable, a bit pricey, but worth it, but not as expensive as some of the other stuff out there on the market. Also in the CQB environment, you want something to protect your Face, teeth especially. I have this handy dandy little tooth guard made by a great dude, James Dorner. Good looking out, homie. I also prefer to wear helmets for indoor environments. That just allows me to wear my Valken soft-sided mask on my helmet and keep everything in one place. Um, I can be a little clumsy, especially if I wear flat bottoms slipping on BBs. The helmet's just gonna protect my head against any sort of doorways, walls, stuff like that. While also keeping my soft-sided in one position, which makes it super easy. So if I do have to take a breather while in the field, I can remove my mask, remove my helmet, get some airflow without any sort of issues with my eye pro. Uh, just letting you guys know that's how we run it and you are not uh, required to run it as we run it. As always, just exactly how me and Brady have been preaching it, run what is comfortable for you. Note, when I am playing indoors, such as the Airsoft Arena, I do wear the same uh, soft-sided Falcon Tango mask yeah just because i just shaved so i'm real uh unprotected with the beard again You're real quickly yeah but yeah this hurts to get shot in a lot mm -hmm. uh, the ears aren't really so bad it's really one in a million chance that you're gonna get shot in the ear it sucks but um, for the lower velocity that we are restricted to for the u.s you're not going to get any sort of bbs embedded into that soft tissue there so you don't have to wear ear protection. Um, some of the ear more sound amplifiers that I have here do work as uh, ear protectors, um, but they do not work very well as sound amplifier amplifiers. Uh, the noise in the arena specifically for really any indoor environment is going to create a lot of echo, which can screw with the sound amplifying unit. Um, some of the higher end stuff, go Carl? Oh, I was gonna say, I have a, Peltor contacts, which do work in here, but they're pricey. And not all of us can spend that kind of money on stuff, so I'd rather tell you, you don't need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, myself, I don't really wear earring protection. Like I said, it's a one in a million chance you're gonna get shot in the ear. It sucks, but it's only momentary pain. I uh, guess kind of head down. Big thing for me, when playing anywhere, I wear long sleeves. I have a lot of money on my arms that BBs will wreck. So I usually wear long sleeves. For the purpose of today, I'm just wearing a t-shirt for comfort. I usually wear t-shirts. I'm usually a heavy sweater, but I do sometimes wear some of these combat shirts that you get pretty cheap. Uh, I like them because you can uh, zip the neckline up and that does create extra protection around your neck. Again, that's some soft skin right there, which just hurts by being stung with BB. These long arms can get rolled up pretty easily. I've got some money, not nearly as much as Carl, so I can get away with a t-shirt. Uh, I have a Wiesatch Repro carrier today. I have LBX chest rigs, all kinds of different stuff. But for today, I feel like we're going a little lighter, being a little bit more comfortable. So this is what I've been uh, wanting to use at a bunch of ops that have been postponed, so there's that sad times. Mm -hmm. My go-to is always going to be the LVX plate carriers. Uh, modified this one specifically to be a little bit lower profile, which we'll go over in a minute. Um, 
I'm wearing jeans today because I'm lazy and don't feel like putting on fancy pants. Same, I usually almost always go with some sort of jeans um, just because it's a little bit sleeker, a little bit more slim, doesn't create as much uh, sound with the fabric moving against the legs. Uh, as for footwear today, trail runners. Mm -hmm. We're indoor at the arena. I'm not really worried about terrain. They're just a little bit more comfortable, a little bit lighter. Uh, outdoor ops, I'm usually wearing boots, either Bellevilles or Solomons. Uh, I have a pair of uh, really sweet Ultima Maritimes coming, but they're not here yet, so I can't be like, look at my sweet new kicks. <laughs> you can check out my kicks. Yeah. Um, anyway, we have a hard floor down at the arena here, so BBs are collecting pretty easily, and they do create a slippery surface, so having anything that's gonna have some good tread to it is going to help with that. The Ultimas here are a soft bottom. Oh my god, I can't stretch. Ooh. <laughs> I'm all worked up. You good? So these are yep, these are flat bottoms, so BBs will slide underneath those pretty pretty easily. So I just have to be a little bit more careful as I'm running around, not to uh, stop too suddenly or try to stretch too far. Um, but flat bottoms are kind of my go-to. For gloves, Falcon Zulus all the way. Those are my favorite. Uh, they're the most comfortable for me. It's what I wear, I just don't have them with me. Always. We absolutely 100% recommend wearing gloves. Getting shot in any of the fingers anywhere sucks. I, I have scars. <laughs> yeah. um, secondaries, they toss out of the way. I have the CZ P09 Urban Gray. Uh, it's a direct replica of the pistol I have for real. So I like to use this to keep the muscle memory training going for my actual pistol. Utilizing an MC Kydex holster, Pretty good stuff, I like it. Uh, it works with both my airsoft and my action. Mm -hmm. I have the CO2 Elite Force 17, the Gen 4 specifically. I still run the orange tip because a lot of the elitists down here, the professional wannabes, uh, kind of get butt hurt when you do shoot them with any sort of orange tip, uh, which is pretty hilarious. As you can see, I'm running a light system on here. So again, the MC Kydex light bearing holster that I have as a Drop leg compared to Carl, which is using a belt mount. These are just some of the options that are available to a local Wisconsin company. Rifles. So for rifles, really do whatever is comfortable for you. Um, the MCX is not my go-to, but it's something that I really like. Um, probably is not going to be my indoor rifle, but I usually almost always go with an M4 base platform because that is what is the most comfortable for me. Uh, I also have the MP5, the Elite from Leap Force as well. The 9mm replica of rifles are going to be very beneficial because these are going to be half of the dimensions that M4 magazines take up. So I could fit two of the MP5 mags in this Blue Force gear replica pouch. Uh, so I can hold twice as many MP5 magazines as I can an M4. Uh. My old trusty standby uh, Tipman carbine. Uh, as you see, I've modified it from what it comes like, and I've done no internal mods to this whatsoever. Everything I've done has just been external. Uh, went with the crane style buttstock, uh, Daniel Defense Mark 18 Riz 2 rail, fake peck box, Surefire flashlight, and LK Inspector Repro. A lot of people say you can't do CQB with carbine length rifles. I'm doing CQB with a carbine length plus with suppressor on. It's all how you position your body. Mm -hmm. You can't effectively do any sort of environment, CQB or long distance with any length of platform. It is all done through muscle memory as well as the personal training that you do yourself. So Carl can do it, you guys can do it. Do you want to talk about your other tip in there? Oh yeah. Uh, the other rifle I like to use, it's one I built quite recently. Uh, it's pretty much a repro of what I was carrying in Afghanistan. Uh, we got, at one point, the CQBRs, which were really nice. And they came with these really fun forward grips that are pretty much just an A2 grip with a thing to mount to a rail. Uh, mount the QD repro of the Knight's Armament QD. Notice this is much shorter than my other Tidman which, if I have the suppressor off, it's actually shorter than most MP5s. Does it matter to me doing it with that rifle or this rifle? No, it's just uh, sometimes I want to look a little cooler with a camouflage gun versus a non-painted gun. Mm -hmm. That's just me. 
Because at the end of the day, airsoft is just fancy dress up. <laughs> LARPing! LARPing. Some of these accessories that are going to be airsoft specific that will help in indoor environments are going to be tracer units. Uh, these are just going to allow specific BBs to light up as they pass through the inner barrel, or not through the inner barrel, but through the tracer unit. And so they glow as they, you know, fly through the air. So you can see where those BBs are landing, if they're getting the wall next to someone, or if they're bouncing off of someone in order to confirm that hit. Uh, another more cost-effective option, though, is if you get a flashlight, when you're shining it, you'll see the travel of your BB in that light path. So you don't need a trace unit, but it's not it's not the worst thing to have. The Tornado 2 specifically are going to be a great type of grenade oh. for indoor environments. Uh, you guys should have seen my review video or overview video of the Tornado 2 and how I just beat the crap out of it. Uh, so this thing does work and it works very, very well in close quarters, especially if you want to clear beat the room. crap out of it. You know, be effective and not have to worry about the grenade itself because it will last. That's a wall. I, you know what, I didn't bring one out here, but uh, a melee weapon. Sometimes you get close enough, you can do the cool guy thing and tap him with the knife. And then giggle and uh, run away. Mm -hmm. Don't be that guy that puts the cut inside of the knife after you hit someone, because that's annoying. Yeah, counting knife kills by scratching them, it just makes you look like a serial killer. That's not fun. Yeah, very creepy. Not Little cool. bit. Not cool. Mind you, everything I'm saying is my own personal opinion. My opinion, and if you want to talk to me about it, we can have a nice conversation over cokes. And a smile. <laughs> and a laugh and a giggle. A giggle. <laughs> now we're going to go into some more of the tactics that are going to help you as players uh, work in indoor environments. So let's go to that. So you guys saw my opinion of stance and stuff like that, but we're actually going to have Carl go over some of his specific ones that he likes. Things to go over. Starting with the basics, body position. You want a boxer stance, you know, feet shoulder width apart. You can bounce around a little bit. Maybe one foot a little bit more forward in front of the other when you're moving. Um, I like to hold my weapon like this. Elbows tucked in tight to my body. So I have a lower profile. You don't have wings flying out there at people to shoot. Um, my grip with this rifle, I have foregrip, flashlight activator right here. So I keep my hand nice and tight in like this. Um, some people do, well, I can't really show you with this rifle, but like C-clamp, I'm not the biggest fan of it. If it works for you, it works for you. It just doesn't work for me. So from that, squat down just a little bit, bend the knees, because now you're lower than average head height. And if you're coming around a wall and you're like this, your head is right at the height where someone's looking. If you're a little bit lower, people aren't looking down a lot in airsoft. So, take advantage of that. Anyway, this stance, arms tight in, and what makes this easier for me, and this is the way I've been trained, if you need to pivot to any direction to engage a target, you just swing your hips. And you can pivot left right as much as you need something to practice it it will feel very unnatural at first but the more you do it the more comfortable it gets much like anything it takes practice 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 tighten the uh, magazine at least magazine retention kits yeah. All right, so Carl talked about different stances that he likes to do, so I'm gonna go over transitioning shoulders and how it's gonna be most beneficial. So if you're coming up on a right-handed corner like this, it's most beneficial to be approaching with a right hand or into your right shoulder in order to show as little of your body and your rifle as possible. Now, if you're right-handed, that's going to give you right-handed people the most advantage because this is your strong side. However, if you try to approach a left-handed corner with your right hand, now a whole lot of your body is exposed as a potential target before, I even, before my rifle even clears the corner to uh, see you guys. So approaching this corner specifically with a left hand or the rifle into your left shoulder, again, to show as little profile as possible. 
small little tricks as well is, depending on if you're a right hand corner or a left hand corner, I usually step my left foot towards a right hand corner so I can keep my profile sideways as little profile as possible, if that makes sense. And then with the left handed cover, approaching with my left foot, again, so most of my body can be angled backwards. And that's kind of the how to's as far as how to transition shoulders, where you would transition shoulders. Again, that's something that you would just need to work on, get a little better at, practice at home. Down here at the arena and in many other CQB places I've played, I've noticed how people take cover quite a bit. A lot of times you're going to see people get right up on the corner of what they're trying to do, and then when they go to shoot, they got to expose a lot of themselves. Or you see someone, this is a left-hand corner, and they try to do it right-handed, and now they're way out there. An easier way to do this. You don't need to hug this plane. If you back up this much, when you start pieing that corner, slow, easy steps, you're watching, and you're trying to take care of this area, you just get a little lean on it, and that's all you're exposing. Versus right here, and you can't really peek it, because if you do, you're just a head and not a gun. You're not able to engage a target. And then when you do, so much more of you is exposed to anyone firing from that direction. Also, again, don't come to a corner you should take with your left and try to do it with your right and throw your entire body out, because now you are and size shape with no cover in front of you whatsoever. That's how I do it. I'm not saying it's the best way. It's just a way to do it. So one big thing that we see down the Airsoft Arena here is specifically with windows is that beginner players are not approaching and shooting through windows correctly. What I see a lot of beginner players do is with their rifles down, they'll peek out like this clearly exposing themselves, checking to see if anyone's there. And because CQB environments are usually a little bit darker, players that are a little bit more proficient are very good at showing as little profile as possible and can then shoot at the overly exposed player from very good cover and end up getting shot in the face when they don't really want to be. Um, other times I'll see players that will sit down underneath the window sill and will try to pop up, again, very close to the window sill so their rifle isn't up. I'm trying to do this. I didn't see anything. I can't clearly see anyone there. So that is something you absolutely should not do. Instead, sitting a little bit farther back, so the frame at which you see myself or me through or shooting uh, out towards anyone is going to be a much smaller picture. So it's going to be the same type of idea if you pie a corner, you're going to expose as little as possible, sitting farther back and moving your body through the windowsill, doing right-handed, transitioning, and then doing left-hand. Doing the same technique of exposing as little profile as possible. Um, also, what you should not do is rest your rifle up like this because this is gonna expose a lot of the rifle barrel. So if someone is sneaking up there, they're gonna see me way before I see them. My light is really loose. <laughs> Better fix myself. Mine is a boo, 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 boo. So let me quick bring you around and I'll show you what I mean. So if Carl is our target, if we're right up against that windowsill, we're clearly exposed and he can see us. Versus if we're sitting much farther back, we are a much smaller profile and can see him yeah. there and just transition back and forth because i can clearly and you guys can clearly see everything that would be a point of contact with players without exposing yourself all right for this next trick we're going to be talking about pieing corners then this is going to be one of the most essential tricks to doing any sort of cqb tactics now, this is something that you yourself are going to have to practice on um, and everyone should be absolutely proficient and understand the techniques behind how to pie a corner. Now, say that I'm going to be approaching this corner here. 
The idea is that I'm going to be similar to Carl in the previous cut where I'm going to distance myself, distance myself a little bit farther away from the wall and then I'm going to slowly step into the wall and make cuts with my rifle. And this is how it's going to be shown. Starting low, cutting upwards, making sure that I'm covering if anyone is exposing their feet or legs. So I'm doing one complete cut of the pie, taking a step in, checking everything until and this is a little bit awkward because of this wall right here, but I'm doing constant cuts, little itty bitty baby steps until I'm all the way into the room itself. And then that way I've cut every sector of this room here and I know that it is clear. And that is how you pipe corner. That type of technique is going to change depending on the room, any sort of exits that are exposed to the doorway you are cutting into, if you have any sort of backup, any partners, stuff like that. So Carl, real quickly, why would you be using a pistol versus your rifle? Um, if you look at the closeness of like these walls, sometimes it's just a lot easier to use something this big versus something this big. Now, approaching this wall again, switching to my offside hand because it is a left side turn, Come in, I clear the corner that is directly in front of me. Little bitty slow steps. And then there's just this little bit left and I peek it. And then from there, I'll transition back and move on to the next. And there's another door right here and do the same thing over and over again until you get through it. Mm -hmm. Talk about a fatal funnel. <laughs> this is a hot topic for the both of us. <laughs> you wanna come join me here just to show you, show people what not to do? Doesn't matter. So within CQB environments, there is always this thing that is called a fatal funnel. It's usually at doorways or any sort of enclosed, I guess, gaps in where people need to move. Now this is pretty wide, we can fit two people through here, but if someone through that open doorway is laying cover here, and Carl and I both need to come into this room, we need to absolutely make a commitment into the room, even if I get hit, Carl needs to continue back behind me, because if I were to choke up and say I'm coming in, someone starts firing, I freak out, and now I'm pushing myself and Carl and anyone else behind us away from our goal, which is to get in. So, show you how it is done, we need to get in. If I get hit, I need to go off to the side and Carl can then continue in. The Fatal Funnel has been the cause of much frustration for the both of us for oh, yeah. CQB and Nielsen events. True facts, Come. make a decision and stick with it. Might be wrong, might be right, stick with it. Commit. I'm going to talk about the Fatal Funnel again and what it looks like from someone, let's say you, the camera, you're defending the doorway. This is what it looks like when someone does not commit to actually entering the room. And how easy is it gonna be for you to shoot that person when they just stand in the door? God damn it, God damn it, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> I'm just there locking the train. Mm -hmm. And I gotta kick his ass out of the way or fall back or pull him back to get that. Yep. All right, now we're gonna talk about room clearing. Now this is going to be a specific way that we are doing it. Um, of course, there are millions of different ways to clear any amount of rooms. Situations are gonna change drastically depending on any amount of variables that you put into it. So we are saying that this is a way to do it. This is, this is by no means the way to do any sort of room clearing. So Carl's opinion on how to do room clearing with one person. Um, one thing to note with room clearing, Corners are your points of dominance. You want to clear your points of dominance as fast as possible by making certain they're actually clear. Not just a quick scan with your head. You are looking to make certain there is no mission objective for some games. There's no one there to shoot at you. Maybe there could be a couch and there could be someone hiding behind it. You would call that dead space, but you need to clear it. You need to open your eyes and look at what you are seeing and communicate that 
Or if it's just yourself, like we're going to show in this first one, be aware of what you're seeing and deal with it accordingly. When it does come to two-person room clearing, it absolutely helps that you have someone you can trust, you communicate well with. Uh, if it's two different people that are complete strangers, or maybe you even have two completely different styles of play for Airsoft, uh, that communication very much get mixes up, and I will explain one of those situations uh, in a minute. All right. Uh, we'll say for this room, there's this door. Where the camera is is another door. You have looking this way, corner one, corner two, technically corner three there and corner four, depending on which way you come into the room. Uh, for the sake of making it easier for you, I'm going to button hook it to take corner one and then work my way through. From here, I'm only doing this so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm peeking that corner, trying not to make too much noise hitting the wall. You don't want to be on the wall because you just told everyone where you are. So clearing this corner, staying away from the wall. Transitioning. Slow, slow, fast. And now I'm on to the next corner. Uh, I already do it to instead of button hooking. I check that corner again. Come in, door. I kind of slide and pivot. I'm slowing myself way down, so it's a little harder for me to not just flow it at the moment. Mm -hmm. So this is the wall. This would technically be the end of the wall. I wouldn't even go up that far. I can roll myself. I mean, just to make sure I'm in frame. We can continue. Yeah. No, we're, if you notice, I didn't, like, when I turned, I didn't go all the way to corners because they're cleared. Yeah, you saw that they're cleared. You don't need to go that far. Well, you're also, again, with more people, if you go too far forward, like, number one would go here, and he's cleared this, but now he's either looking here or he's got a gun there. Two goes that way. He goes a little further forward. Not too far forward to commit to the doorway yet. Uh, three would come in right about here, and he knows this is clear, so he's going to gun up on that door. Four is going to go into that corner. So now everyone's guns are on that doorway. One will then cross. Uh, two is going to stay there, keeping the gun on the door. Three's gonna come in and four is gonna flow in behind. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna flow through four or two will flow in behind us. And become four. Yep. But we don't have four. <laughs> it becomes a numbers game. Yes. <laughs> uh, what we did there. Whatever way the first person goes, the second person goes the opposite way. Um, some people always say number one goes one way. I don't like that personally. Um, I think you make a decision as you enter the room and just commit to it. Mm -hmm. And the second person knows, well, he went this way, I go the other way. And that's that. Yeah, especially when it comes to airsoft specifically, there are so many different types of resources available on the internet as far as which number person goes which direction. Having the understanding that if you're number two, going the opposite direction of whatever way one goes just makes it so much simpler. Then later on, we don't have to make some sort of argument of, well, one should have gone left, but one didn't. So, and it happens. Uh, people go the wrong way all the time. Just number two, just be cognizant of, well, he went that way, gotta cover his back. And if you're looking for a resource material, you want to find US Army FM 7-8. Infantry tactics. Infantry tactics. Yeah. Infantry tactics. Oh no, I'm not wearing a glove. I'm not infantry enough. I'm not wearing a shirt. That's combat. So again, I'm still person number one. You notice I slipped. Um, it happens. You just gotta keep fighting through it. At least I didn't fall this time, yeah. which happens. That's why he wears a helmet. 
Um, ooh. So one of the things that should go or can go wrong when you are with different play styles within Airsoft, such as myself being more of a, uh, a meal sim type of kit or player and playing with some of my uh, speed softy friends, um, what they like to do when they pipe corner is they like to pre-fire corners, which absolutely confuses the heck out of me. Because if they're pre-firing one direction and they get shot from another, my understanding is that they were shooting at someone and they just got hit. So then I'm going to commit into the room where they were firing at. So that can confuse me coming in number two because I'm not aiming where the target would be. The other thing with pre-firing, if they don't know you're stacked up outside the door about to come in, you just let everyone know you're coming in. And it's the one thing in CQB, it's so much easier to be the defender than the aggressor. It's one person can control the room from outside of a door if they know you're coming. And that's just the fact of life. Mm. We didn't even talk about why we check corners. Um, you'll see a lot of times people won't look in corners. And certain people like to stand in corners or sit down in corners and just pick them off as they come in because someone doesn't even look a little bit to see if there's a body there. Mm -hmm. So you'll see someone try to clear a room by just going like that. Almost. Do that again. So instead of actually checking their corners, they just half it and just do this. Well, look at that. Right in the butt cheek. Right in the bouquet. Now this is airsoft. We don't really have to worry about real injury or death. But maybe try to uh, look out for that. Um, I want to talk about flagging, which is presenting body parts, weapons, around a corner or a wall before you're actually engaging it, letting anyone know if they're on the other side of that, you're on your way in. Something looks like this. That isn't good. You can tell I'm on my way because my gun is exposed. Or some people like to lead with their leg way out there and before they can do anything, as they're coming across, boop, 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 get shot in the foot and leg. Mm -hmm. It counts. It does. Another thing to be on the lookout for is shadows, which we're going to move to another spot to show you that better. Actually, to right off of Carl, for CQB, normally you would want to go with lower profile gear because if you wear any sort of extra backpacks, have anything that is exposed too far out, such as a dump pouch. In airsoft, gear hits count. So, if I'm exposing this, a hit, a bunch, that counts as a hit, and I'm out. So just making sure that this is not exposed, so I can come out and just present as low profile as possible. One of the very critical tricks that we always explain to beginner players or people that are maybe having a little bit harder time down the airsoft arena is always watch out for the shadows. This wall specifically is one of the few points where shadows are going to expose a player behind the wall before the player actually shows up. So keep an eye right here on where that shadow might be. All right, now Carl, go back to where we could just barely see the head of your shadow and kind of just show, no, way farther back. Yeah, right there. So as you guys can clearly see, the head of Carl, or at least the shadow of Carl's head was exposed there, but look at how far away he is from the corner. So he's already showing that he is committing to this corner before his physical body is committing. I am four feet away from that corner. Yeah. Uh, another thing, the topic of shadows. Flashlights. You're coming around this corner. Uh -oh. Uh oh. If you constantly have your light on, you are just shining a beacon mm -hmm. to let everyone know you're right over there. Mm -hmm. And if we're in any sort of stack, backlighting is absolutely terrible. I actually want to go here. So if we're in any sort of stack, backlighting is terrible. 
to where I'm one of the lead persons, like I'm number one, Carl's number two or three or four or even six possible if he's that stupid, to have his light on, backlight my character or my profile, so then people can clearly see the outline of me. Be careful with your lights. And lasers, oh, lasers are real bad for it too. Lasers are terrible. So one of the other things that we're gonna talk about is this actually can apply to any sort of outdoor environment. It's not going to be one of the indoor specific ones. It works for both. And that's going to be bound and cover. So the situation is going to be Carl and I are gonna be starting out in a room farther up. We are then going to give supportive fire, covering fire, and then bound up two different points supporting each other as we move forward. Again, it's something that can be used indoors and outdoors, starting in that room back there, working this way. I want to show you how that works. Covering while I move! Covering, moving! Set! Cover me while I move. Covering! Set! Cover me while I move! Covering, moving! Set! Cover me while I move! Covering! Moving! Set! Move! <laughs> That's good. That's uh, a great That's a very basic way of doing it. Uh, calling it out to your friends. I personally don't like to use all of that talk. You can do it with two commands. Moving, set. Moving, set. Mm -hmm. uh, when you do that, you don't really five to set a five to eight second rush. You don't want to leave the guy who's covering hanging in the breeze. Quick movements, they don't have to be long, just get to a point of cover where you can actually cover your person well. Yeah, I knew Carl was set, I knew he would cover me. That's that trusted communication, that trusted uh, part, not partnership, the... Teamwork. Yeah, the teamwork. Uh, but we just over enunciated everything to make it as clear for you guys as possible what each of us were doing without actually shooting. Smoke bomb! Alright everyone, that is going to be it as far as tips and tricks for CTB tactics. Um, I hope this was educational for you. Some of these tactics are going to be specifically for the airsoft arena, but some of them, like we did say, are going to translate over into any sort of outdoor field stuff like that. Um, currently, with the pandemic, the airsoft arena is going to be closed, but once everything blows over, I hope that you guys do come down, check out the field. We do have rentals available. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, all these YouTube videos we're going on to the airsoft, airsoft Headquarters YouTube channel and Airsoft C. If you have any questions or comments, shoot us a message. We can uh, cover some other things more in depth. Or if you'd like to see more videos like this, let us know. We can cover lots of stuff. We got some time right now. Yeah, we got a lot of free time, and we can definitely do these videos during the weekday. Stay awesome. Like, subscribe, comment. <laughs> Ninja kick. <laughs>